Hello! Today a little FreeSky XM Plus has arrived. So let's get the B510 out and let's take that rubbish receiver off. Hook this one up so we can fly this properly. Well hi there and I've just been fitting my um, FreeSky XM Plus. So what I've done with this one, I've taken the S bus um, onto the flight controller here and also into the VTX here, see if I can fix that problem, which seems to have, have done the trick, basically avoiding the other connector on the FC down here. So let's turn this on and I'll show you the situation. I've got my little uh, G-Tang receiver here. What I've temporarily done here is just put channel six on this switch. So whenever I turn that, you should see that the little LED lights down here move. So having it on this switch, allows you to cycle through the channels in your band so you can at least find hopefully something spare if you're flying with a bunch of people. Of course if you want to change band or you want to change power outputs that's where you have to uh, use the, the button to actually do that. But um, yeah it's not bad. I, what I would say is don't just simply put it on a switch that you can just press with one switch because you could do it by accident. So I'll be doing a, a logical switch to make sure I've got some protection in there. But anyway this bit this bit works, so just make sure you go straight from your S bus on your receiver to both the flight controller and the VTX if you want to use that. The other small thing I notice about this particular um, XM Plus I've got, and I've yet to put it in its uh, shrink wrap here, is the actual antenna end on these ones are quite small. If I compare this to uh, an X4R, you see how that's quite longer? So. I haven't checked the range on this, but previous ones I've had, I think have had definitely longer ones and they've had very good range. So I'll be checking that to make sure it's okay because I can always cut a little bit more of that off to make them the same. But we'll see how that goes. Okay, we've got the bits fit in, we're ready to fly. You've got the uh, FreeSky XM Plus antennas coming out here. I also changed over the FPV antenna uh, using the MMCX connector, very easy, just unplug plug in so I could bring a, um, the pigtail in with the RPSMA adapter and I've got a little pagoda on there to test um, and we'll see how that goes and if that goes fine what I've also done I've got this little wedge of foam this is just the high density foam you get in a lot of packing around like electro components so I've always got this stuff which I can just pop on there with a bit of double sided tape and then put a GoPro session on there like so. If you're wondering what this is I, I put my sessions in um, a little silicone surround which helps it grab on and I put a little tether in so I can tie that to the quad so if it gets in a big crash it fall off but it won't go miles away. So yeah let's get to the field and try this out. And off we go. My first task here was to check that the XM Plus receiver was going to be up to the job. I flashed this with the 16 channel version where channel 16 is the RSSI indicator. I actually tend to prefer this more than telemetry mainly because you'll just suddenly have this telemetry warning being shouted from your radio without any real warning that it's coming up. At least when you've got um, RSSI on the screen you can see what's happening. Now the field's about 300 meters and this is still high RSSI so I'm pretty happy that this is this is all good. Um, and I just flew it around a bit just to get used to it again. It's still very nice and floaty and is well, pretty nice and easy to chuck around. Previously I found this a little bit tricky to find the midpoint on the throttle. So I added a 0.25 throttle expo and beta flight and this has really sorted it out. It doesn't do that much but it's just enough just to get that easy point where you can keep the altitude absolutely perfect. I was noticing though that it, it seemed a little bit sluggish in the rolls actually um, and I kind of wish I investigated this a bit earlier because I didn't bother coming back to it for quite a while but anyway I was happy enough to go and put the GoPro on after a couple of flights so I basically put a bit of double sided tape on strapped that GoPro on and gave it a go and this is the first flight with it and all I did here was go and reproduce my little range test I just wanted to see how it would feel because it's quite a bit of extra weight for such a small quad but it felt pretty much identical I, I felt I had a few little wobbles in my live picture perhaps that, uh, that big block acting a bit of a 
a windshield that's going to cause some wobbles. But if you look at the GoPro footage, everything is absolutely lovely, smooth as you like. And um, I really quite like listening to the motors. You can just hear how smooth they are as uh, as it goes along around the field here. So after doing that bit, I, I still had oodles of power left and it was still nice and floaty. Um, it really surprisingly barely made a difference in how it handled and the way it flew. So I was pretty happy with that. Now unfortunately, in this first flight we had the sun out. Um, I did another three flights after this one and all of them were in the shade. So I thought I'd do a little bit here with the sun out. But it was only my very last LiPo, or just before using my last LiPo, that I, I thought, oh, I should really have a look at this thing about the sluggishness of the rolls. Maybe I'll, I'll take a look. And I went into the Betaflight OSD, and what I'm noticing now that I didn't notice then is somehow the profile got stuck on number three. I don't know how that got there, but for some reason it somehow got changed and in profile 3 the super rates are all default on 0.7 so I whacked these up to 0.8 um, and got on with it I just wish I'd actually thought of doing this after the first lipo really I wasn't I guess I wasn't concentrating too much on thinking oh this is the right speed for a roll I was just getting on with it but anyway this is my last lipo in the field and this is with the actual proper super rate of uh, 0.8 which I'm a lot happier with it's just much more maneuverable uh, much snappier faster rolls and flips unfortunately this field I I love having this field close to me it's fantastic just for going out with a quad and doing some testing and it's handy that it's the same place and I can fly around and I sort of know what to expect in places. Unfortunately this field hasn't got much in the way of things to do really. It's a big open field with trees around the outside um, and you know thick woods so what I'd love is you know a bunch of nice trees spread around I could do some stuff with that would be ideal. So you'll often see me going up and down the sides here because that's literally some of the only stuff in the field so it's it's pretty boring I won't go on and on and show loads of footage here I just wanted to show mainly that um, the quad flies really nicely with a GoPro session on board and it's really smooth but I think we'll have some more exciting footage from it and you know when I'm here with other people it's great fun to chase around these things but at least we've got another quad in the view then and again after these six lipos that I put through today I'm really happy with the handling and it's a lot more predictable about how it's how it's going to handle how it's going to fly and the sort of power you've got available to you my only real issue with it is the camera angle and especially how difficult it can be if you get the angle up to land but I'll come and cover this in a second Well, I was a bit worried that putting a GoPro on something like this would be a bit of a heavyweight thing for such a lightweight quad, but hey, it really flew well and um, it was smooth and nice and I really liked it. Still had plenty of float time upside down, so yeah, hard to fault really. So the several things I would recommend with the beef fight is put a, a proper skew on there because on this size quad I don't think you really get any benefit from having one of the little dipole antennas. I mean, if you're gonna crash, it's gonna come down and, and bash things, but these antennas bend around. It's not like you've got a real exposed skew like you might have in the micro quads, which get squished up. Um, put a decent receiver on there, that's the main thing. Those little Aurora RC ones that get bundled with it in the FreeSky one, oh, I think my foul safe was less than 200 meters away, and that was really off-putting. The XM Plus, brilliant, not a problem, didn't, have any issues at all. The camera distortions still there um, but you just get the hang of flying it after doing a bunch of packs. I put another six lipos through it today and I was pretty happy in how it was flying. I was able to see everything I needed to see and, and pick out details very well. My main nitpick with this 
would be the camera. I mean, it's a, a lovely camera. It works really well. It's got a great big beautiful lens. I don't think it's wide angle enough. I'm not sure what the angle is, but um, you see I'm poking up here at a good sort of 30 something degrees. Um, and when going fast, I'm still seeing a lot of ground. Um, and coming into land is really tricky because all I can see is sky. That says to me that the angle's too narrow. If I could get something like a 2.1mm lens in there, um, I mean, I don't care about how much the distortions happen in my FPV cam, as long as it's a decent camera. I'd be much happier because putting it down slightly so landing's more comfortable means I can't get that speed, and putting it up means my landings were pretty awful. Um, I do need to put the GoPro at a little bit more of an angle. I just build up this little uh, wedge a little bit more. Of course, in fitting the new RX, we also fixed the problem with the VTX. That is really unacceptable, though, that it would ship with the wiring wrong like that. I, I don't know how that happened, but it did. So if you've got that problem, put the two wires straight on your ass bus pad on your receiver and you should be golden. Yeah, I'm looking around. This is going to be my go-to 5-inch quad now because the way this flies and its compact little nature of it, I like. I like it a lot. As before, came from Gearbest, so I'll, I'll have the, the links down below, of course. Um, check it out if you like to. Meantime, no doubt you'll be seeing this again or film from it when I'm chasing other people around because uh, this is going to be my little camera cord for now. I like it. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye.